Why did you send me to this horrible place was your prayer or your right. question you asked the yeah. Lord. Yeah, and actually I didn't even ask him. He just read my thoughts. Like Psalms 139.2 says the answers I thought so far off. I, I didn't want to ask him any questions because just when you're in God's presence, you just don't, you just want to thank him and worship him for saving you. But I thought that, and, and he said, because many people do not believe that hell is real. Mm. He said, even some of my own people do not believe hell exists. Now that statement surprised me. I thought all Christians believe in hell, but we found out many Christians believe in annihilationism. And that's a teaching that says you simply cease to exist if you deny Jesus. But that's not true. Jesus said in Matthew 25, 46, these should go into everlasting life and these should go into everlasting punishment. He used the same word everlasting as the word aeonios. So just as heaven is everlasting, so is hell everlasting. Mm. And some Christians believe in universalism. That's a teaching that says everybody gets saved or soul sleep, many false teachings. And uh, he wanted me to point people to the scriptures. I'm just a signpost to point them to the scriptures. It's interesting you said you knew by, you knew, you just, he knew your thoughts. The, I've had, uh, one the encounter I shared last week with um, um, my sister, I, I ministered on this on Sunday a little by my sister when uh, I had a vision of her in the hospital and those demons around her and all this kind of thing. Uh, but I knew um, I knew what was going on. Like I knew all the assignments of mm -hmm. the enemy. I knew what the purpose was. I just knew it by intuition. And every time I've had these encounters, like supernatural encounters, it's like intuition. I just I say I just knew. I just knew it's like something you just know and it's something maybe when God can reveal it now and maybe even in heaven when we get there you can I think we're going to be learning forever honestly Bill oh yeah we will and like what is what is that it's like an intuition so like I yeah. knew like these demons are there for this purpose they're they look dumb when the demon the angel destroyed that one that was on my sister like took it out um he, I knew he was on assignment so it's interesting you say the Lord knew your thoughts um, yeah. And I well, know there's can, scripture for that, but it's interesting that you say that. Right. Psalms 139 too. He, he, know, he answers our thoughts afar off. Wow. So yeah. Of course wow. he answers our thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Here's another question. And people are coming in from everywhere, uh, local La Habra. Um, and then they're coming from all over the world, Southgate, even local here. So we got Patricia Soto. Come on, Patty. <laughs> I heard his question. Number one, why would God make such a horrible, this is a huge one. This is a loaded question, actually. Why would God make such a horrible place as hell? Well, number one, Jesus said why. In Matthew 25, 41, he said hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. He never intended for man to go to this place, but he used the word prepared. That's the same word he used in John 14, 2, where he goes to prepare a place for us in heaven. So he's preparing heaven for us, hell for the devil. But the reason hell is so horrible is because James 1.17 says every good and perfect gift comes out from above, from the Father of lights. So all the good we enjoy in life, the fresh air, sunshine, fellowship, drinking, eating, sleeping, all the good comes from God. It's not automatic. So what he did in the preparation, since he was preparing for the devil, he withdrew his attributes or his goodness. Mm. See, quickly, hell is dark because 1 John 1.5 said God's light. There's only death in hell because John 1.4 said God is light. There's only hatred in hell because 1 John 4, 16 said, God is love. There's no mercy in hell because Psalms 36, 5 says, the mercy of the Lord's in the heavens. There's no strength in hell because Psalms 18, 32 said, it's the Lord that gives us strength. There's no water in hell because Deuteronomy 11, 11 says, water is the rain of heaven. And there's no peace in hell because Isaiah 9, 6 says, he is the prince of peace. So see, if God removes himself from the situation, all the good goes with him. You can't separate the good from God. And so if a person says, I don't want anything to do with God, well, fine, there's a place prepared that has nothing to do with him. That's why hell is so horrible. If I, you don't want nothing to do with God, it's that's what the result is. Right. And one thing, though, the fire in hell is God's wrath. He pours out his wrath on sin in the form of fire. But God poured out his wrath on Jesus on the cross, so we wouldn't have to take that wrath. And, and he so, poured uh, all of it. He right. poured all of it. All of it. And, so a person and, has a choice. You know, to torch. They can take the wrath or they can let Jesus take it and repent and receive him as our Lord and Savior. I mean, he took the full right. brunt of Everything. Adam's sin and the sin of mankind. And that's why it said he looked deformed beyond a man. Exactly. I mean, he, 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 he took it in his body. He took it in right. his soul. He took it in his spirit. He took it. And he went yeah. to the lower parts of the earth and paid that price. So we would never have to go there. He already right. paid that price. 
Yes. He paid it. Yeah. And 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 the devil thought he had him, but he he was he was sorely, sadly, pathetically, like he is a devil, mistaken. Right. right. Because the Holy Ghost resurrected him and there was no power in hell that can stop him. No. So we would never have to go there. So this, this is the goodness of God. This is not about condemnation. This is the this is the greatest message. This is the good the the, yeah. the goodest news, the greatest it, news ever. It's, it's a loving message because it's a message of warning. You yeah. Know, it's 46 verses Jesus talked about hell because he was warning us there's really a hell. So that's a loving message when you warn yeah, you know it's what a loving, loving parent, message. What loving parent wouldn't warn their child not to play in a busy street? Same okay. thing, God. You, you know, for 605 freeway, trucks are coming to 100 miles an hour. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. You could plan a street, me haunt. Are you crazy? You're going to go to jail for parenting like that. Exactly. And we want to pastor like that sometimes. Right, right. It's dangerous because we want everyone to like us, but it's not about liking us. It's about telling the truth because it's the truth that brings the freedom. That's right. Okay, I'm going to ask another question. Yeah. You, you ready for more? You right. always, always have so much energy. You got the life of God on you, brother. I'm Why right. would anyone believe me? They will think that I had a bad dream or that I'm crazy. Because let me say this, because by nature, you're more of a conservative kind of right. guy, right? So right. for God to give you this is like humility for you. And like, yeah. I could see where you can ask this question, but answer yeah. that for us. Yeah, I asked that. I thought that question and the Lord answered. He said, it's not your job to convict their hearts. That's the Holy Spirit's. You just go. Wow. Wow. So it's not your job to convict them. You just go and you preach the gospel. And that's why some of you are asking these questions about, you know, what's my assignment? What's my job? Like, how do I stop it? Well, you, you can't. You and I didn't die on the cross. You and I didn't pay the price. You, you and I didn't didn't weren't perfect and sinless. You and I didn't come from heaven. You know, we are God's sons now, but we are not the son of God. He came, he died. And when Bill said that, he took the whole brunt of your sin, the whole brunt of my sin, the full weight of it. And 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 and, and I'm gonna say this, and then I'm gonna say that, and then Bill will share on this. But when you're talking about the cross and Jesus paying the price on the cross, so so you could be forgiven. Don't just like become religious with that. Like, oh, it's Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Oh yeah. No, it's a it's like the most most important, beautiful, incredible message that you can possibly imagine. That God, pure God, never hurt nobody. He never did anything wrong. He 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 never sinned. He came from heaven. Didn't have to, but he did. He came from heaven and he gets on on on, on this on this, uh, this this crucifixion, he gets he gets scourged forty nine times, thirty nine times, mm -hmm. and I looked up the word by his stripes, and it literally means by his stripe. That's how much it was brutalized that we are healed, and so we don't have to convict people. We preach the good news in love. We don't like bash people, but we preach the truth, and the Holy Spirit does the convicting and the saving. Bill, you want to chime in on this? Exactly. You know, it's our job as, as Christians is just to preach the gospel. Uh, we can't save anybody, but it's the Holy Spirit that actually convicts them. So that's what he was telling me. Just go share and point people to the scriptures, and the Holy Spirit will convict their hearts that hell is real, but God's so loving, he died a horrible death on the cross to keep us all out. And, um, you know, so that's the point. And I don't know why I had this, real, this kind of vision, but sometimes you see preach, people preaching like at conferences and they're like against preachers and then they're preaching about hell. And I don't know if that's the most effective way to do it. Um, I think there's another a way that God can give us wisdom to communicate it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like it's a, you want to get across the severity of hell, but also the great love of God, what he's gone through to keep mm. us out and He's given man a free will to choose. He's telling you, here's the way out. Revelation 21, 8 says, all unbelievers shall have their part in the lake of fire. So mm. there's a warning. He's told you where you're going to go, but he gave you the choice. Mm. He provided the way out. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So he provided the way, and people say, I reject your way. I don't receive it. 
Well, that's why you could see why Jesus said in Matthew 12, 37, your own words will condemn you. Mm. It's a question of people ask, you know, um, do, how can God send a good person to hell? He doesn't. A person's words send them to hell mm. because they said, I don't believe that Jesus is the only way. I don't believe that. Well, he just told you the warning was, if you don't, all unbelievers shall have a part in the lake of fire. So there's a warning. You chose to not heed the warning. And so it's just that I'm, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to play devil, devil's advocate, they say, right? Mm -hmm. you, this is a good question. Here's a good one, Bill. What about the person who never heard the gospel? Will they go to hell? Actually, yes. And it sounds harsh, but I got to get through this, okay? Okay. First of all, um, all of us are born in sin. You know, Psalms 51, 1 through 5, and John 3, 17 and 18 says we're condemned already because we're all born in sin. So a sinner cannot enter heaven. No matter, just, just because he hasn't heard the gospel doesn't alleviate the fact that he's a sinner. You know, and 1 John 5, 19 says the whole world lies in wickedness. And then Psalms 9, 17 says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. And also Acts 17, 30 says, God commands all men everywhere to repent. So everybody everywhere has to repent. But here's the thing. Romans 1, God says, because I've made creation and it's obvious there's a designer. Look at the human body, plant life, animal kingdom, a baby being born. That points to design and that points to a designer. So if a person in the jungle that never heard the gospel would look up to God and say, who are you? That's all they have to do is turn to God and say, who are you? He will reveal himself to them. And wow. Job, 30, Job 33 says he even gives man dreams and visions to keep back his soul from the pit. So if that person shows an ounce of humility and says, who are you, God? Because I can see there's a creator. It's obvious all around me with this all this creation. So God holds man accountable because of Romans 1, because of creation. But again, he's merciful. He'll get through to that man either through he'll get a Bible to him. He'll send a missionary to him. He's given man a conscience to know right from wrong. Uh, John uh, Romans 2.15 and John 8.9. Um, he's put a, eternity in man's heart. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3.11 says we know that we're an eternal being. Man knows that. Uh, man knows by his conscience that there is a right and a wrong and a God and a good and evil. And how many and, testimonies have we heard this where like Muslims from other nations said, right. I met a man and he had holes in his hand and he told me, or Indians, like he heard about Indians and, you right. know, like Indians, like a Native American. Like they had these right. visions of this white man in a yeah. white robe and, and he had holes in his hands. So, or they had a dream or a vision. So God is going to get his message to you. Uh, right. His mercy, his grace, right? Right. Yeah, I believe just, that. Just show that little bit of... Um, uh, humility and call out on God and God will find a way to get somebody across your path, a missionary. You'll hear a TV, you'll get a Bible. He's put the, he's put the way to heaven in the word. He's given it in writing. So it's. Wow. And, 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 and this is another thing. Um, I had a one preacher friend of mine. Uh, he, he said, he, you know how he got saved? It was crazy. It was, it was wild. He was watching Billy Graham and he said, whatever's Billy saying, that's what I want. That's all he said. And he said that moment he got saved and he never, his whole life changed because the God saw the sincerity of his heart. Right. He, he didn't pray a specific prayer. He said, whatever's Billy saying, that's yeah. what I want right now. I need what right. Billy's saying. And that was it. And obviously Billy yeah. was preaching Christ, but that sincerity moved God and mm -hmm. saved him. It, it's, this is yeah. good news. This yeah. is great news. It's like the thief on the cross. I mean, he just, he knew, he said, we, we're sinners. We deserve what we've got. But Lord, would you remember me when you come in your kingdom? So he acknowledged he was Lord. He knew he was a sinner. And just that fast, God saved him. And I preached that Sunday. I said, you know, I go and I get emotional. But, the, you know, that thief on that cross, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't get baptized after. He right. Didn't, he didn't, he didn't, um, like, he didn't do anything. Like, when I got saved, I, I, I went home and got high for two weeks straight. And, and I cha had to change because the Holy Spirit was like, it was lifting okay. off me. But God didn't tell me, hey, change your lifestyle and come to me. I came up on LSD. I was on LSD. And he sobered me up supernaturally. Mm. And he saved me that day. And he worked He worked on me to the point where, you know, I, I haven't done drugs in 30 years. But, yeah. but his, mercy, his mercy endures forever. His 
loving kindness, his grace is oh. undeserved, okay. unearned, unmerited, yes. supernatural favor. I, 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 he told me after I got saved, Bill. He said, "Jason, you're you're on borrowed time. You're oh. on borrowed time," and that's true. That song, "Amazing Grace." Yes. You know, yeah. thank God that I told the church, thank God that sinner, uh, that thief, that sinner was on the cross. Mm -hmm. Some somebody like me needed to be aware. Yeah. That, that no matter what. Yeah. And then maybe somebody's watching now and, and they yeah. feel like am I too far. Maybe they stumbled on this, you know, on YouTube and they think, Am I too far? No. No one's too far from the grace yeah. of God. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. And I mean nobody. Exactly. And there's no there's no thief on a cross that he can't save. That's right. the other one though, remember his attitude was, oh, he was mocking them. But the other one what? was that he, little bit of humility. And it was like heaven's like a like a running back. Boom, hit the hole of yeah. his heart. I know. Wow. Wow. God's so merciful. Okay, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna I'm gonna right. I'm gonna I'm gonna like kind of flip it a little bit. Um here you go, right? This is a question for you. Um, you and this is what you you asked the Lord. Why did those demons hate me so much? And maybe you could tell us a little bit about it and then explain. Well, when I was in hell, these demons were tormenting me. They tore their, tore my flesh with their claws. They threw me into this wall of this prison cell I was in. Um, they began to try to tear my legs and arms off. I mean, it was horrendous. They're so wicked. They have such a hatred for God and for man. And I thought, Lord, you know, what did I do to them? Why do they hate me so much? And he said, because you're made in my image and they hate me. See, John 15, 18, Jesus said they hated me before they hated you. So demons hate God, but they cannot hurt him, but they can hurt his creation. And that's why Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So the devils hate man. And, but God came and uh, he loves us, gave his life for us. But that's what the Lord answered me with that question. This is a loaded question. There's a lot of loaded questions, but I think these are in people's hearts and minds. Uh, are there children in hell? No. Um, you know, I didn't see any and I understood there was none. Also, the people I saw, they were adult size skeletons that I saw mm. through the fire. And the screams I heard were the screams of adults. You know, you could tell the difference in a scream of a yeah. child. But more importantly, it's what the scripture says. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me for such is the kingdom of heaven. Mm. And he said, unless you accept heaven like a little child, you'll not enter. Mm. And, and there's eight other verses where he pointed that out. So I believe under the age of accountability that all children go to heaven. Yeah. And I think like other people have been to heaven and no one ever mentioned children and the Bible is not right. there. I, that doesn't. Yeah, that's I agree right. with that all the 100 percent. Um Okay, I'm gonna ask you this one. Um, why didn't I know you, you asked the Lord, when you were there? When I was there, God had blocked it from my mind that I was a Christian. And the reason was, see, I under, if I was there as a Christian, I would have known, praise God, he's getting me out of here. Mm. Right, I would have known that. He wanted me to experience what they feel. Mm. See, Isaiah 38, 18 says, those who go down to the pit Mm. cannot hope for thy truth. And we know Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and life. They have no hope for him because it's too late. Mm. That's what he wanted me to feel. And none of us in life here know what it's like to be really, truly hopeless. Because even if your situation is so painful, so much, so dire, you can always die to escape the pain. Mm. But in hell, you understand you'll never escape the pain. Wow. So we have no, because there was times where, it got so rough for me in my own life where I wanted to commit suicide, but I knew it like, no, I knew better. Yeah. I didn't, I was scared of what would happen after. Right. And that's how hopeless it felt. Right. It was just like, there's no yeah. hope. So there's a level of hopelessness we can feel, but yes. it's nothing compared. I could see that where there, it's not well, even close. In hell, in hell, you can grasp but more than we can hear eternity. See, we think of time as a beginning and an end, but in hell you, I understand there is no end. No one will ever come rescue you. There's no angels uh, to protect you. There's no Calvary coming over the hill. No friend to ever talk to. You understand you'll never get out. And you'll, I mean, you'll, you'll this talk about, so this is where loneliness is from hell. When people right. are feeling lonely, that's, that's a spirit because yes. 
because that's what hell is. That's right. part of the torment. You're alone forever. You're alone, alone but- and lonely. Because mm-hmm. you could yeah. be alone now, but I'm never, I'm never alone. You know, I'm by myself, right. but I'm not alone. He'll never leave me or forsake me. Even right. Jesus said, "I'm, I'm alone, but I'm never alone," because my Father would never leave me. Right? And hell, people are not there. And like people that go to prison, they put them in like the, 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 the cell where they're by themselves. Oh. And that's the torture, right? That's torture. Yeah. But well, yeah, in hell, even though they're in this big pit of fire, they're all kept separated and isolated. Yeah, you're alone. You're alone. You're by yourself. You'll never have a conversation again with anybody. And you're just there forever and ever. Okay, so this is a good one. Right. We're going we're gonna to really zero in. we got five minutes. We're going to zero in on these because I think this is huge. It, it, watch. This is the comment. Isn't preaching hell using scare tactics? This is the question. Well, in some sense, yes. And any rational person should be scared of hell. And Jude 23 says some are saved through fear, pulling them out of the fire. So, yes, it is partially. But on the other side, no, it's a message of love because, like I said, it's a message of warning. And uh, so, you know, God's warning people to stay out of hell. And that's a message of love. So I don't know how you could take it. But some only get saved through fear. Some will say, I don't care that Jesus loved me. That doesn't matter to me. So they need to be told, well, you understand you're going to go to a place that's burning fire Demons that hate you, that will torment you. You'll never see another person. You're hungry. You never get to eat. You never have a drop of water again. You'll never sleep. You have no strength in your body. You're being tormented by demons. There's maggots crawling all over you. That's what you're going to experience. So, yeah, it is scary. And it, it should scare anybody. You know, the, so. the tactic, like, I'm going to, Lord, it's going to scare the hell out of you. That's like a legit, because... It's true. Some people's hearts are so hard and they're like, I don't care if you love me. He's like, well, you're going to end up in hell. And the Holy Spirit brings that revelation. You know what? Mm-hmm. And say, so, well, people are just getting saved not to go to hell. What's wrong with that? Right. Exactly. I, know, I know when my sister gave her life to the Lord recently, like seven years ago, after, because, you know, we do the night of terror. We take, take people through seven major ways people die in LA every day. And then we take them into hell. And by the time she got out of it, like suicide scene, everything. She got out of it. She was going to commit suicide that night. She walked up to me right when I invited people to come to the Lord and grabbing, dug her nails in me and said, I don't want to go to hell. I said, you don't have to. Give Jesus yeah. your heart. So for her, it was, I don't want to go to hell. Right. So it's exactly. all, it, it works. It's God. It's his mercy. It's all part of his mercy. And one person asked Mona Rose, why did God allow you to go to hell if you were a Christian? And that's pretty much what you're saying, right? Well, I, I was there uh, in a vision. I didn't I wasn't condemned to hell. Yeah, it was a vision. Yeah, it was just a vision of hell. And you can travel in a vision just like Paul and John actually traveled to heaven in their spirit bodies. First Corinthians 15, 44 talks about a natural body and spirit body. So God just chose to take me in my spirit body to hell to show me that it's real. Yeah, with vision and dreams, he terrifies you. He showed right. it to you. as, a, yeah. And that was you going through something as a... a Right. That was mercy. That was God showing you to tell us. Right. Job 7, 14 says, you scare me with dreams and terrify me through visions. Oh. Isaiah 21, 2, he was given a grievous vision. And in Job 4, 14, Eliphaz was given a vision that causes bones to shake. So God can give you a grievous, terrifying, bone-shaking vision. Wow. Thank God and, he did. Yeah. Thank God he did give it to you. And, and, he gave it and to Job, another another lady, Mary Kay Baxter, too. She, right. She had a whole book she wrote. and. It's heavy. Right. Then there's many other people that have seen hell in a vision. I'm not yeah. the only one. No, there's my a, friend, uh, Pastor Abbasha, changed his life. He said mm-hmm. he saw a cavern. And, and and people have different things, but it's kind of the, all the same. He said he saw right. a cavern. It's the same thing I think William Booth saw from Salvation Army. He saw a yeah. cavern yeah. and the sea of humanity being pushed into the cavern, and they couldn't right. stop it. And he, And the Lord says, I want you to put your church right there and stop well, it. Stop right. people from going. Right. Well, quickly, I had a guy that I knew in my neighborhood. We served on a board together, and he was dying in the hospital of a disease. He was an atheist, mocked God, never believed in God. I went to see him right before he died, and he says, Bill, I almost died last night. I was slipping out of my body. I was going down a long tunnel. It was getting hotter and hotter. I saw demons. I was terrified. Oh, my God. What do I do to stay out of hell? And this was a confirmed atheist. 
And so I led him to the Lord and then he, two hours later he died. But the point was, there's many people I've met at the hospital on their deathbed, as they were slipping out of their body, they were on their way to hell and they were terrified. The and worst thing that could happen to somebody is to die without Christ. And if you die yeah. with Christ, it's honestly the best thing that could happen to you because right. you're with the Lord, you know? And I think yeah. a lot of people are going to end up in heaven that we thought there's people that throughout history yeah. that did terrible things that we think, no, right. they're going to hell. Not necessarily. And I don't want to say names because it could have, you know, people are like, no, but the truth is if they asked Jesus to come into their lives, they could have killed millions of people. Yeah. And they'll stand before God and give account for that. But the truth That's is, it. Jesus even took all that on the cross for right. them. They truly repent. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless a man repent, yeah. you shall likewise perish. And repent. I mean, I repented. I accept, repent is accepting Christ into your heart. And it's agreeing to turn away from a sinful lifestyle and agree to follow Jesus. It's mm. not enough to mentally assent to the fact and say, I believe Jesus died, and then to go live your own life, do your own thing. No, it takes a turning away from sin and agreeing to follow Jesus, to walk away from sin. And, That's asking, and, and then the Holy Spirit recreating your spirit. Right. He gives you a new heart and a new spirit. A new heart now, and a new spirit. you don't want to sin. No, you know? you're like, I want to change. I need help, Lord. And he'll come into your heart. And he'll right. recreate your spirit and he'll make you born again. Like I've seen my spirit and I always tell people it's funny. I'm big. I'm like, I'm seven, like seven feet or something. I don't even know. That was years ago. I'm probably bigger now, you know? And and, and it's funny. Right? My spirit's black. <laughs> yeah. But it's like a, like this, like a, like a platinum. You know? so I'm, I'm a rich black spirit, man. But, but, but when I wasn't saved, if you could have saw my spirit, it was probably horrible, mm -hmm. horrible. And I had one other friend of mine who saw his spirit and it was like, horrible but yeah. now my spirit's alive unto god i got born again and that's the key you got to get born again and i think this a question here is what makes christianity unique no other religion can get you to become born again you want to talk want to want to wrap it up here and then yeah. we'll pray most of the world religions are based on philosophical thought except for four buddhism judaism islam and christianity these four are based on personalities mm. but only christianity claims resurrection for its founder Mm. No other religious leader died for our sins and then rose from the dead. Mm. So that makes Christianity unique in that we have we serve a risen Savior. He proved he was God by rising from the dead. No other religion can say that. So that's what makes Christianity unique. So Jeff Christ. Jefferson asked pastor, because obviously he's thinking about his mom. How can I get her to Christ? Listen, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You and your house will be saved. Even if they get saved on their deathbed, you claim that right. promise. Because That's God right. has promised salvation for our families. Right. So uh, I don't have a lot of time. Thank you for all you, your giving, your generosity, all the partners. Uh, thank you, Bill. You know, I don't want to close this program. I'm, honestly, I can't close it. You need to pray for people to come to Jesus right now, Bill. Okay, okay. All right, well, Revelation 2015 says, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. If you want your name in his book, then just say this prayer. Say, Dear God in heaven, Dear God in heaven I know that I've sinned. And I cannot save myself, I cannot but I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross for me, that he was crucified, died, died, and was buried, but he rose again. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. You are the Son of God. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for giving your life for me and for taking me to heaven. And I now confess I'm a born-again Christian, and I'll serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's beautiful. Well, we're going to close now. Again, thank you for all the partners. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, like, comment, uh, hit the notification bell, uh, sign up and register for the email. You're going to get a, a message um, every week, a sermon, a book, a, a, a PDF, a something. It's our gift to you every week to inspire, to encourage you. And wow. Well, thank you again, uh, Bill. I'm going to yeah. go back to him real quick. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us. And I can't wait to see you in July. And maybe we'll do this before. I, I does quite a bit more questions, but we couldn't get to them all. I love Amen. you, my brother. I and thank I'll see you, you soon, man. I thank you so much. And I love you. Thank you so much for having me on. Okay. Well, God bless you. I'll see you soon. All right. God bless. Bye-bye. All, right. all right. This is today's podcast. We went over a little bit, but what does that mean? Hey, Pharaoh's time is up in your life. It's time to let my people go.